Well, hey everybody, Jimmy here. We're gonna be doing some cool giveaways through our YouTube page. So if you watch Michigan Outdoors through YouTube or online, uh, you can go to our YouTube page and actually like and subscribe and then comment on our video this week and we're gonna be giving away uh, sweatshirts. We're gonna just pick them at random. So again, all you have to do to enter is go to our YouTube page, uh, like this week's show, uh, subscribe to the channel and make a comment below and then we will get some giveaways uh, sent out this week and we're going to be hopefully doing that quite a bit more just to get our YouTube numbers up and that's always good for all of us here at Michigan Out of Doors. So thanks so much for watching and enjoy the show this week. Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik, and we've been working on a great show for you this week. We'll kick it off by taking you over to the Nuego area where Jordan spent some time on the Muskegon River chasing after smallmouth. You won't want to miss that story. And Jimmy's got some other excitement in store for us this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a couple more stories on this week's show. I'm gonna take you out of the port of Muskegon with some folks from out of state that had never been on Lake Michigan and never caught a salmon before. You won't want to miss that. And we also have time for a brand new wild game recipe on this week's show as well. So lots of good stuff. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes. Here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees the sweet smell of nature's in the air from the Great Lakes to the quiet stream shining like a sportsman's dream it's a love of Michigan we all share Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988, offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. This moment brought to you by DTE's Clean Vision. fishing the Muskegon River for some summer smallmouth, using a few different techniques today, but mainly kind of targeting that deeper water where they're going to be holding the summer, a little bit more current, finding the food. Yeah, what are these fish doing when it's 90 plus degrees out? This, this time of year on this river, a lot of them are still pretty active. They're feeding aggressively. A lot of these fish, I think, come up from Muskegon Lake because the river stays a little bit cooler. A little bit more oxygen in the water and a lot of bait up here so the hot summer days can produce some pretty awesome fishing up here. A little better one, not a giant. Nice fish. He was hungry. Oh that's a good one Brett. Yep. Little nicer class of fish right where he was supposed to be. Does he have any players with him? I already put my rod down, so I hope not. <laughs> oh. A 
lot of strength in that current. There's the bolt flip them. Yeah. Looked a lot bigger back there. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of strength in the current, that's for sure. So the Muskegon River is a great system for a lot of migratory and resident fish. So there's three main dams in the system, Rogers, Hardy, and Croton. Above those dams, there's lots of good fishing, lots of good inland stuff, and then everywhere from Croton down to the lake, there's a lot of great migratory runs, steelhead, salmon, and even in some cases, some big smallmouth coming up from Lake Michigan and Muskegon Lake. So a lot of opportunities. It's a tailwater fishery, so it doesn't freeze up very often at all. So good year-round opportunities. You just tell me if you need the net, and I'll try not to spear it. Gosh, it's sitting it, back there like a steelhead, dude. I think this one's a little better. Oh, we, well, I it's think not, it's about the same. I think he's just in that current. Yeah. <laughs> nice one, though. Fun one. We're getting bigger. It's definitely a little bit better. Well, threw a bait in there, and pretty, I was pretty sure there was a fish there, and I didn't get bit, so I switched it up, and first cast in there, he ate it. These guys use a variety of different lures when targeting smallmouth at this time of year, most of which involve maintaining contact with the bottom of the river, even if that means donating some gear from time to time. If I'm not fishing top water, I really like to be making bottom contact. So any kind of jig, Ned rig, swim bait, anything like that, I like to be hitting bottom often. If you're feeling the tick off the rocks, more often than not, you're getting bit. I go through a few more baits that way, but to me, it's worth it to catch a few more fish each time out, to snag up a few more times. Ooh, nice cast. I got the log. <laughs> Atta boy. I knew as soon as I tried to get under that tree, <laughs> I was like, this is a bad idea. <laughs> Both of these guys love to fish and have been doing so for quite some time. Well, I've been doing it my whole life, probably since the age three, my dad started taking me out there and um, got me into fishing tournaments pretty young too. And I don't know, I really like smallmouth fishing is preferred, but I do a lot of largemouth fishing too and love that. And just the diversity, especially in Michigan, we, what we have of fishing shallow water, deep water, rocks, docks, fishing, you know, frogs up in the scum. It's just always something different. And you can kind of catch fish however you want to catch them. And that's something I've always enjoyed my whole life, so. Welcome to the boat. The quantity of fish obviously has been pretty good for us. You want that it's, it's definitely overlooked for a summer fishery. It's pretty popular for steelhead fishery. A lot of people know about it for that. These are one of my favorite fish to guide for, for sure. I spend a lot of time each year fishing for them. They fight hard, they can get big, and they're relatively easy to catch for beginners. Fishing the Muskegon since I could walk, so it's, it's been quite a long time. I spent a lot of time here growing up, and as soon as I was able to drive around and whatnot, I was up here pretty much every day that I could be. It's a beautiful river, awesome variety of fish here. Zach and Brett both work at the Outdoorsman Pro Shop in Jenison. And although their lives revolve around fishing, it's not very often that the two of them get to get out and fish together. Yeah, not as much as we'd like to. Our schedules are a little bit different, and every time that we uh, really would like to fish together, it always seems to have something that gets in the way. But no, we've really developed a really good friendship since we met each other. Actually, we met each other through the shop. Uh, mm -hmm. Brett was coming in just as a customer before that, and just talking fishing, sharing fishing stories, starting to fish together. and. Um, we have a lot of fun working together, fishing together, and uh, just becoming better fishermen together too, so. Decent fish. Not a giant, but we're stepping in the right direction here. You want the net or are you going to both flip them? Yeah, I think we'll scoop them. Easy enough. He's right there. Got him there, bud. 
They fight so hard for their size, it's unreal. As the evening went on, we continued to catch fish, and they seemed to be in groups. When we caught one, we almost always caught another one nearby. Most of the fish we were catching were in shallow water and not in the deep holes, as you might expect this time of year. They're usually not fit sitting in the fastest current of the river, like here in front of us. There's kind of a bull in the current that offers some extra depth and a little bit of a current break. Anything where there's a back eddy along the bank or anything like that's going to hold fish. Um, but I'll find a lot of times midsummer that these fish are up hunting on the flats in kind of walking speed water where you can see bottom. They'll be schooled together just hunting as a pack. Helps to have a second line ready. But we're just kind of drifting down the river here and any spot that looks like a likely area for one to lay, throw in there and then watch very closely when you start bringing your bait in. A lot of times you'll see them interacting with your bait. Oh, the there's another one with them. Yeah, reel in, try to get that thing. There's two more with them. Oh, there oh. you go. Got him. Got him. Got him. <laughs> Doubled up. <laughs> oh, mine popped off. <laughs> we're trying to get that third one down there. You got right ahead of him and you just watch his mouth open to smoke yep. it. <laughs> we're starting to figure some stuff out a little bit. Um, starting to notice a few key areas and a few key spots that they're starting to really kind of load up on. Typically where there's one, there's more. Um, still doing a little bit of the sight fishing thing. Primarily around wood in pretty shallow water actually. Um, they're not quite in the holes like we kind of anticipated. Still kind of using crayfish imitation. We noticed that uh, earlier on we were doing a lot with swim baits, not doing so well, but a lot of these fish are spitting up crayfish, which the areas that we're in has a little bit of scattered weed on the bottom and very crayfish looking water. So just trying to find those bigger ones, which I think we're starting to get close to there. A lot of fish, just got to find the bigger ones yet. Yep, that's, that's big. a good that's one. A big one. Yep, that was right where he should be too. Oh yeah. You can't call that shot any better. Oh yeah, that's a good one. I saw him going along the log there and I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> Crazy strong. It's like a steelhead, like you said earlier. <laughs> it's probably a 17, 18 inch yeah. fish. Like I got this figured out. If I stay under the boat, they can't yep. get me. <laughs> there you go. Yep. I'm gonna get that one. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, switch from there yep. real quick. There we go. That's a better one. Now we're talking. Look at that fat little chunk. Much better quality fish. Big gut on that one. He's been eating well. One of the best things about fishing for smallmouth bass is that everyone, regardless of how big they really are, thinks they're about a five pounder, which makes them a ton of fun to fish for. Special thanks to Brett and Zach for inviting me out for a fun night of fishing here on the Muskegon River. Well, in our next story, we're going to do something that I'm not sure if I've ever done before. I was out on a boat with a bunch of people that had, one, never been on Lake Michigan before, number two, had never caught a salmon before, and that always makes for a really kind of a fun trip when you get to see people experience what Michigan has to offer here in our great state. All right, guys, well, I'm, I'm Jeremy. I'm going to be your first mate today, so. Okay. 
I'm just gonna let him run, eh? Good side. Yeah, I'm gonna get there still. Because this is stainless steel wire, and it's zero struts to it. That's a good thing. It's running. You don't want to do anything fast, it's all fluid. Okay. So far, that fish is winning. So, so far we've got, what, one, two, three, four, five rods in only. We took a bite immediately on a dipsy diver down about 200 feet, or out 200 feet. Um, I think this is the meat rig, so we'll see what happens. How far out is this one? Currently, 280. Yep, currently we're at 283, 281. Uh, we got a ways to go. <laughs> well, we got our best guy on the rod here. One with the most experience. Yes, that the gray hair gives it away. I found out about this fishing trip just a few days before it happened. A good friend told me that they were taking two boats out of Muskegon with guys from out of state, and there was an open spot, so I tagged along with camera in hand. We didn't even have all the lines in the water, and we had a big king on the way in. Yep, you're all right. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Yeah, boys! Yeah, boys! Good yeah. job! Good job! Congratulations, Carl. Wow! He's in the boat. In wow! The boat. Well, he's in the net. Yep. I feel better when he's in the boat. <laughs> good job, young man. <laughs> young man, yeah. <laughs> Salmon number one in my lifetime. Uh, that's that's first one ever, eh? First one ever. That's a good well, one you to did start. a good job. Congratulations. That's kind of like the guy that goes deer hunting and gets a 12 pointer right away. <laughs> Alright, what's your case? Big fish. Oh, that's, Whoa, boy. that's a tank, guys. Woo. That's a nice one. These guys were all here as part of a trip put on by SkyQuest Ministries, and so while we had a minute, Rod told me about how this trip of guys from Iowa and Minnesota got here to Michigan. We got SkyQuest Outdoor Ministries. Uh, we are um, our purpose as a ministry is to reach people with the gospel using hunting and fishing. We have been around for about 15 years. Uh, we've only done primarily turkey hunts, and we thought, well, let's, let's expand and try some different things. So that's why we uh, that's why we're here. Salmon fishing is something that uh, a lot of guys don't get a chance to do. Uh, so it's another opportunity for them to. Do what brought you to Michigan? Uh, Seth and Jack are from here. Okay. Seth and Jack McCullough. And uh, that, that, they are who started SkyQuest Outdoor Ministries. Okay. And uh, been friends ever since. Been, I've been helping with the turkey hunts ever since it started. And then, uh, yeah, that's why we're here. It is fun for me as we travel from port to port around the state to get to know charter boat guys from all over. And I had fished out of Muskegon many times, but not with Captain Kyle Buck. He has been doing this a long time and says the fishing right now, well, it's just picking up here on the west side. Oh, it's been pretty decent. Um, but this Kings just showed up not too long ago, maybe a week and a half ago in the Muskegon area anyway. And uh, before that, the trout fishing was real good for a few weeks. Um, the biggest one we've caught this year was probably 26 pounds, King. Okay. That's a really nice one we got today. Um, seems to be a lot of meat bites and flashers and spinnies and flies. Uh, we basically go off water, uh, currents, uh, temperature. So, you know, the water um, will get pushed around a lot and we find those current breaks. Being a Michigander, well, we can sometimes take the unbelievable fishing we have on the Great Lakes for granted. So to see this kind of fishing through the eyes of fishermen from other parts of the country, well, it is pretty cool and a good reminder to us all. What do you Iowa guys think of this big lake fishing? Oh, I love this it. This is all right. Love it. This is yeah. all right. Yes, it is. If you get used to this. What kind of fishing do you back home? Uh, walleye, crappie, and bass. Okay. Some musky. Some yep. catfish. Yep. Is this your first time on Lake Michigan? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Won't be the last. We had steady action all morning. I had a chance to ask Kyle how he got into fishing and what he likes about taking folks out on the water. 
Well, my dad started me out fishing when I was could barely walk and it just took me a lot and just I fell in love with it and decided to make a career out of it. Truthfully, I didn't really like big lake fishing that much when I was a kid. I was more into rod in hand, bass fishing, walleye fishing. And then, uh, I don't know, I just sort of got back into it after I started first mating and learned about it. And it's been quite a few years now and it's been going good. My favorite thing is watching little kids reeling fish or people that have never done it catch their first fish or somebody catch their biggest fish they've ever caught that's i'd much rather see somebody else catch fish than myself good god boys we might have made the 30 club on that one that's gonna be awful we had two big kings today in the mid 20 pound range, two really nice coho, a few steelhead as well. It was a great box of fish, and the other boat out today did pretty good as well. It was cool to see a group of guys from around the country with a great cause using fishing as a way to connect. We are certainly fortunate here in Michigan with lots of opportunities in the outdoors. So whether you get out on the water every day, or it's been a while, one thing is true, spending time with friends and family on the water is a blessing for sure here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, if you've been watching Michigan Out of Doors over the years, you know that wild game recipes have been a big deal, really all the way back to Morton F., Jerry Gepetta, Fred Trost, Bob Garner, all that went before. A lot of times they did a lot of different wild game recipes, and we've been doing that over the years with Jim Wood. Well, Jim now is part owner of a new restaurant in Mount Pleasant. We decided to stop in and start doing a few more recipes with him. Well, we are here today with Jim Wood, and Jim, it's been a minute since we've been with you. We're in a new spot. Tell us where, where we're at and how can people find you these days? So we're in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, Okay. Uh, where I was born and raised, um, at a restaurant that I named Wood Shop Social. Okay. After my last name and a lot of wood in here, and it's, you know, I think it's time to be social again. We've been locked up for a long time. <laughs> and you're time. right next to CMU's campus, and so we literally yeah. can see it from where we're standing. So. Yeah, it's right here. We're kind of a the, cool spot. Yeah, we're in the middle of everything, right off of 127. Awesome. We got some lake trout here today. What are we going to be doing uh, today, uh, menu-wise? So this is an inland lake trout okay. um, from a deep, clear lake up in northern Michigan. Um, we're going to make lake trout piccata, which is traditionally a chicken dish. Um, we're going to do it with lake trout dough. So we okay. dredge it in flour, and it's, you kind of make a butter and caper sauce with it. It's super quick, super easy, one pan. Let's do it. How do we get started? All right, so we've got our oil in our pan. Okay. So we're going to wait till it just smokes just a little bit. Give it a shake. Then will you do both sides of the fish then, or just the Yeah, one? you want to cook, um, <clears throat> you really want to cook them about two-thirds of the way on one side. Okay. Um, and that's really to get it, help it get brown. The key here is, especially if you're not using a nonstick pan, like I'm not, um, is to kind of give it a shake as soon as it hits the pan. Then you're gonna make some sort of a sauce to go with it, or on top of it? Yeah, so we're gonna use, uh, it's like a caper, white wine, butter sauce. Um, hmm. You know, once again, it's one of those things where if you're camping, you only need a few ingredients. Um, to make this dish, you know, okay. you can cook with the wine and then maybe drink it afterwards. <laughs> if there's any, still if there's left. any left. Well, you only need about a quarter cup, so hopefully there's oh, okay. some left. Bring three bottles. <laughs> All right, now we're going to add our caper berries. Just give those a stir. Those are pretty strong flavor, right? Capers. Yeah, yeah. I mean. It's, Think of it as like a, a super strong pickle almost. Mm. White wine. All right, we're just gonna reduce that wine until it's almost gone. And we're kind of balancing flavors here because we have all this acid and then we're gonna add a good amount of fat which is gonna kind of tone everything down. And then we're gonna hit it with a little lemon juice and a little parsley and it's gonna be done. Nice, this is pretty simple. Yeah. And like I said, you don't have to use lake trout. You can really use any fish for this. Um, it also good, goes really well with pheasant, uh, really? turkey, grouse. Yeah. Huh. So we're just going to put that over top of the fish then, eh? And that's it? We're going to hit it with a little bit of parsley, a little bit of lemon juice, and yeah, that's basically, basically the story there. Going to pour that right over the fish. And what's the name of this dish? 
This is Lake Trout Kakata. Thanks so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stick around in upcoming weeks here on the show. We've got all sorts of great things headed your way. We'll take you out on a couple of kids events that have happened this month here across the state. We'll do a little bit more summertime fishing and we'll show you some outdoor adventures you can be doing here in your own home state. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a good way to kind of keep tabs on us. You can do that through our website, our different social media platforms, as well as YouTube. So lots of places you can be checking us out. And one of the topics that we're uh, hearing a lot from you, the viewers on right now, is the Camp Grayling expansion. If you don't know what that is, you might want to Google it and find out. But basically, the footprint there for the National Guard, they have put forth a proposal to the DNR to expand their really almost double in size, adding 100 and some 60,000 acres of state land to their uh, footprint there in the Grayling area. And that would, have, of course, would affect a lot of sportsmen and women around the state of Michigan, not just in that part of the state, but really all of us that travel through there. So we're going to be talking with a lot of different people to try to figure out what exactly is going on. How does that affect us as Michigan sportsmen? So that is something you might want to kind of keep, keep an eye on over the next few weeks. And we're going to have several different interviews with folks to really find out what is happening. So, hey, hopefully if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck. Deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to fire away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above.